Hi everyone, uh, in this video we'll get into the mathematical uh, part of the theory of consumer behavior which is the utility maximization process and the expenditure minimization process. And we're gonna do that by doing an actual example. Uh, so we'll do a two good case example for the duration of the series and um, we'll be using this exact problem that we have now in this video for all the other videos so it's connected so you can see all the properties we're gonna try and prove and we're gonna try to derive. So in this problem, suppose we have a consumer, her name is Raji, and she exclusively derives utility from the consumption of two goods, namely good one, which is X1, and good two, which is X2. With prices, okay, P1, the price of good one, and P2, which is the price of good two. Uh, her utility function is given as um, u, uh, which is equal to x1 raised to alpha, x2 raised to 1 minus alpha, where alpha lies between 0 and 1. And the domain of her utility function is that um, uh, all the quantities are strictly positive as well as all the prices. Okay, so if you notice the utility function that we have here, that's called a Cobb-Douglas utility function. Okay, so uh, we'll be using the Cobb-Douglas utility function as we derive the problems to follow. So in this video, we're going to focus on marginal utility uh, as well as the concept of diminishing marginal utility and uh, marginal rate of substitution. So the first thing um, we're asked to do is we need to calculate the marginal utility derived from consuming x1 and x2. Okay, so if you recall, okay, the marginal utility, okay, the marginal utility, utility from consuming a good is calculated using the derivative, okay, the derivative, um, uh, u sub i, which is equal to partial of the utility function with respect to a particular good, okay? Uh, so say we want to calculate marginal utility of good one, that's equal to u1, which is equal to the partial of the utility function, the partial derivative of the utility function with respect to x1. Now, intuitively, Okay, this is the ah, uh, this is the change in utility. Okay, if we change good ones quantities, so say we increase good one, holding x two constant. So you know we're deriving it with respect to x to x one. So we're holding x two constant. And if we derive the function, so re remember, okay, the function is um, so we have is x one raised to alpha, x two one minus alpha. Okay, deriving that with respect to x one. Okay, let's use a simple power rule to bring down the alpha. So that's alpha x1, alpha minus 1, since alpha was the exponent of x1, okay, times x2 raised to 1 minus alpha. Okay, so that's the marginal utility of good 1. For good 2, it's in a similar process, u2. Okay, so that's the partial derivative of the utility function with respect to x2. And this is equal to, so the exponent of x2 is 1 minus alpha. So we bring down 1 minus alpha times x1 raised to alpha. That remains the same. Times x2 raised to 1 minus alpha minus 1. That's negative alpha. Okay. Now, that's the marginal. So this is the marginal utility. Marginal utility of good 2. This is marginal utility of good one okay now there's a addendum to this question and then it says do these marginal utilities support the assumption of non-satiation so non-satiation is an assumption in the theory of consumer behavior with regards to the utility function which suggests that a consumer would prefer consuming more to less so it would he or she would prefer consuming more goods to less goods and that happens if your utility is higher, okay, if you consume more, uh, say, of one good, none less of the other. And essentially, it's just a way of saying 
are the marginal utilities that we computed for each good, are they strictly positive? So if you notice, okay, the marginal utility for good one, that's greater than zero for all values in our domain. So that's when x1 and x2 are greater than zero and then p1 and p2 are greater than zero, although we don't have any p1 and p2 here yet. And we can see the same Okay, with our marginal utility for good 2, it's also strictly positive for all x1 and x2 greater than 0 and p1 and p2 greater than 0. So this marginal utilities, these two marginal utilities here are positive, which suggests that the consumer uh, uh, prefers more goods to less goods because that will increase uh, his or her utility. So that's how to solve the problem one so we derive the marginal utility of each good okay and uh, since both of the marginal utilities are greater than zero it supports the assumption of non-satiation okay so moving on to the next problem okay does Roger's consumption preference indicate that her preferences obey the law of diminishing marginal utility well again we know that okay we know we know uh, the marginal utility of good 1 and the marginal utility of good 2. So mu1, that's u1, this is equal to alpha, x1 alpha minus 1, x2 1 minus alpha. And um, marginal utility of good 2, that's u2, which is equal to 1 minus alpha, x1 raised to alpha, x2 raised to negative alpha. Okay, what we can do now is uh, to prove, okay, to prove the law okay, of diminishing marginal utility, we take the second order derivative. So what's the change in the change? Okay. So what happens to marginal utility of good one if we increase the consumption of good one? And what happens to the marginal utility of good two if we increase the marginal utility of good two? So we take second order derivative and for uh, the first case so let's do a uh, partial of u1 over um, partial of x1 okay and that's just basically the second order derivative of the utility function with respect to x1 okay so that's the same and if we calculate for that so we get um, so we're gonna bring down alpha minus 1 times alpha, okay, x1, uh, x1's exponent now is alpha minus 1, we derived it again, so alpha minus 1 minus 1, that's alpha minus 2, x2, 1 minus alpha, okay, so if we simplify this, we get um, alpha squared minus alpha, okay, x1, alpha minus 2, x2, 1 minus alpha, okay, and uh, if you notice, okay, so remember, uh, recall, okay, alpha lies between 0 and 1, okay? And if you square a number that lies between 0 and 1, well, um, that's a value which is uh, less than its original value. So you know that alpha squared is less than alpha. It's less than, definitely less than alpha. So... If I'm subtracting alpha squared minus alpha, this will be some negative number. I know that x1 is strictly positive, and even if I erase it to that, that's positive, and this is also positive. So if I'm multiplying a negative number by something that's positive by something that's positive, that's a negative number for all values inside the domain. Okay, So given that the second order derivative is indeed negative, this supports the, that her preference for good one obeys the law of diminishing marginal utility. That is, okay, uh, if she increases her consumption of good one, none less of good two, her utility will increase. So that's non-satiation. But that increase in utility as she increases or he or, he or she increases her consumption of that same good increases, the increase gets smaller and smaller. So that's why the marginal utility gets smaller and smaller okay, as she increases her utility, as, I'm sorry, as she increases her consumption of that same good. So 
let's see if that holds true for good uh, 2 as well. So that's u2 with respect to x2. Or the second order derivative okay, with respect to x2 squared. This is equal to... Uh, so exponent of x2 is negative alpha. So that's negative alpha times 1 minus alpha. x1 raised to alpha, x2... Okay, negative alpha, okay, since we brought down negative alpha, minus 1, okay? Then simplifying it, so we get negative alpha plus uh, alpha uh, squared, okay, in this case, plus alpha negative times a negative is a positive, x1 alpha, x2 negative alpha minus 1. So again, okay, we know that alpha squared is less than uh, alpha, but alpha here is negative, alpha squared is positive. So this is something that's negative. Sorry. This is something that's um, negative. Uh, again, x1, that's something that's positive in its domain, as well as this one is also positive. A negative times a positive times a positive, that's less than zero, which is negative for all values in the domain. So uh, both, uh, both uh, second order derivatives, order direct, okay, partial derivatives, derivatives are negative, which supports our assumption of the law of diminishing marginal utility. Okay, so that's how to solve the second part. Okay, and the last for this video is um, so we want to obtain the marginal rate of substitution for good one and good two. So if you recall, okay, MRS one, two is uh, the negative of the slope of the indifference curve, which is negative U1 over U2, or simply U1 over U2. But we know U1 is the marginal utility of good one over the marginal utility of good two. So U2 is the marginal utility of good two. Then mu1, that's just the partial derivative of the utility function with respect to good one. And marginal utility of good two, that, again, that's just the marginal utility of, the, um, of, uh, of good two. So uh, we derive the utility function with respect to good two. Okay, so we have that form there. But remember, we already solved for that. So u1, again, is equal to alpha x1. Okay, alpha minus 1, x2, 1 minus alpha. U2 is equal to 1 minus alpha, x1 alpha, x2 negative alpha. Okay, and then just plugging that in, okay, we get MRS, 1, 2, is equal to alpha, x1 alpha minus 1, x2, 1 minus alpha, over 1 minus alpha, x1 alpha, x2 negative alpha. Okay. We can simplify this further. Okay, we actually we can leave it there, but um, for the ease of computation in the succeeding parts, we can simplify this. So, if I bring x one to the new, um, if I bring so for example, I bring x one to the denominator. So I'm bringing x one to the denominator. I take the negative of this. So that's um, alpha. So one minus alpha. That's x one alpha. So I'm taking the negative minus alpha plus 1, and say I'm going to bring x2 here from the denominator to the numerator, it becomes x2, 1 minus alpha, this is a negative alpha, so it becomes a plus alpha. And then I'll just simplify the exponents, so that's alpha x2 over 1 minus alpha x1, their exponents are just 1. And that's the MRS for the utility function x1 alpha x2 1 minus alpha. And those are the first three parts of the utility maximization process.